Let me ask another ridiculous question. I, I, prom I think this, this might be the last ridiculous question, but I have to. I doubt it. <laughs> I, I aspire to ask as many uh, ridiculous questions of uh, of a br brilliant MIT professor. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the Black Mirror. It's funny. I, I, I never watched the episode. I know when it happened, though, because I gave a talk to some MIT faculty one day on a uh, unassuming, you know, Monday or whatever, I was telling him about the state of robotics. And I showed some video of, from Boston Dynamics of the quadruped spot at the time. Uh, it was the early version of spot. And there was a look of horror that went across the room. <laughs> and I said, what, you know, I've, 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 I've shown videos like this a lot of times, what happened? And it turns out that this video had gone, yeah, this Black Mirror episode had changed the way people watched, um, yeah, the videos I was putting out. The way they see the these screen. kinds of robots. So I, I talked to so many people who are just terrified because of that episode probably of these kinds of robots. They, I almost wanna say they almost kind of like enjoy being terrified. I don't even know what it is about human psychology that kind of imagine doomsday, the destruction of the universe or our society and kind of like enjoy being afraid. Um, I don't want to simplify it, but it feels like they talk about it so often. It almost, they, they, there does seem to be an addictive quality to it. Um, I talked to a guy, uh, so there's a guy named Joe Rogan, who's kind of the flag bearer for being terrified of these robots. Uh, do you have a, two questions. One, do you have an understanding of why people are afraid of robots? And the second question is, uh, in Black Mirror, just to tell you the episode, I don't even remember it that much anymore, but these robots, I think they can shoot like a pellet or something. They basically have, it's, it's basically a spot with a gun. And um, how far are we away from uh, having robots that go rogue like that? You know, basically spot that goes rogue for some reason and somehow finds a gun. <laughs> right, so... I mean, I'm I'm not a psychologist. Um, I think I don't know exactly why uh, people react the way they do. Um, I think I think we have to be careful about the way robots influence our society and the like. I think that's something that's a responsibility that roboticists need to embrace. Um, I don't think robots are going to come after me with a kitchen knife or a pellet gun right away. And I mean, they, if they were programmed in such a way, but I used to joke with Atlas that um, all I had to do was run for five minutes and its battery would run out. <laughs> but uh, actually, they've got a very big battery in there by the end. So it was over an hour. Um, <laughs> I think the fear is a bit cultural, though. Because, I, I mean, you notice that, like, I think in my age in the U.S., we grew up watching Terminator, right? If I had grown up at the same time in Japan, I probably would have been watching Astro Boy. And there's a very different reaction to robots uh, in different countries, right? So I don't know if it's a human innate fear of metal marvels or if it's um, um, something that we've done to ourselves with our sci-fi. <laughs> uh, yeah, the stories we tell ourselves through uh, through movies, through just uh, through popular media. But if if I were to tell, you know, if, if you were my therapist and I said, I'm really terrified that uh, we're going to have these robots uh, very soon that will hurt us. Um, like, how do you approach m making me feel better? Um, like, why shouldn't people be afraid? I, there's a, I think there's a video that went viral Recently, everything everything with Spot and, and Boston Dynamics goes viral in general, but usually it's like really cool stuff, like they're doing flips and stuff, or like sad stuff, it, be, it's the Atlas being hit with a broomstick or something like that. But uh, there's a video where I think uh, one of the new production Spot robots, which are awesome, it was like patrolling somewhere in like in some country, and like people immediately were like saying like this is like the dystopian future, like the surveillance state. For some reason, like you can just have a camera, like something about Spot being able to walk on four feet would like really terrified people. So like what, what do you say to those people? 
I think there is a legitimate fear there because so much of our future is uncertain. Um, but at the same time, technically speaking, it seems like we're not there yet. So what do you say? I mean, I think technology is um, complicated. It can be used in many ways. I think there are purely software um, attacks that somebody could use to do great damage. Maybe they have already. Um, you know, I think uh, wheeled robots could be used in bad ways too. Drones. Uh, drones, right? Um, I don't think that, let's see. I don't want to be um, building technology just because I'm compelled to build technology and I don't think about it. But I would consider myself a technological optimist, I guess, um, in the sense that I think we should continue to create and evolve and our world will change. Um, and if we're, we will introduce new challenges, we'll screw something up maybe, but I think also we'll invent ourselves out of those challenges and life will go on. So it's interesting because you, you didn't mention like, this is technically too hard. I don't think robots are, I think people attribute a robot that looks like an animal as maybe having a level of self-awareness or, or consciousness or something that they don't have yet, right? So it's not, I think our ability to anthropomorphize those robots is probably, um, we're assuming that they have a level of intelligence that they don't yet have. And that might be part of the fear. So in that sense, it's too hard. But, um, you know, there are many scary things in the world, right? So uh, I think we're right to ask those questions. We're right to um, think about the implications of our work. Right, in the, in, the sh in the short term, as we're working on it, for sure. Is there something long-term that scares you about our future with AI and, and robots? A lot of folks, uh, from Elon Musk to Sam Harris to a lot of folks talk about the th you know the existential threats about artificial intelligence. Oftentimes, robots kind of um, inspire that the most because of the anthropomorphism. Do you have any fears? It's an important question. Um, I actually, I think I like Rod Brooks' answer maybe the best on this. I think, and it's not the only answer he's given over the years, but maybe one of my favorites is, um, he says, it's not gonna be, he's got a book, Flesh and Machines, I believe. Um, it's not gonna be the robots versus the people. We're all gonna be robot people. <laughs> because, um, you know, we already have smartphones. Some of us have um, serious technology implanted in our bodies already, whether we have a hearing aid or a pacemaker or anything like this. Um, uh, people with amputations might have prosthetics. Um, that's a trend I think that is likely to continue. I mean, this is now uh, wild speculation, but uh, I mean, when do we get to cognitive implants and the like? And yeah, with Neuralink, brain computer interfaces. That's interesting. So there's a there's a dance between humans and robots. It's it's going to be it's going to be impossible to be scared of the other out there, the robot, because the robot will be part of us. Essentially, it'd be so intricately sort of part of our society that yeah, and uh, it might not even be implanted part of us, but just it's so much a part of our yeah our society. So in that sense, the smartphone is already the robot we should be afraid of, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, and the, all the usual fears arise of the misinformation, the, the manipulation, all, all those kinds of things that, um, that it, the problems are all the same. They're, all, they're human problems, essentially, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the way we interact with each other online is changing the value we put on you know, personal interaction. And that's a crazy big change that's gonna happen and rip through our, has already been ripping through our society, right? And that has implications that are massive. I don't know if they should be scared of it or go with the flow, but um, I don't see, you know, some battle lines between humans and robots being 
the first thing to worry about. I mean, I do want to just, as, as a kind of comment, and maybe you can comment about your just feelings about Boston Dynamics in general, but, you know, I love science. I love engineering. I think there's so many beautiful ideas in it. And when I look at Boston Dynamics or legged robots in general, I think they inspire people curiosity and feelings in general, excitement about engineering more than almost anything else in popular culture. And I think that's such an exciting poss like responsibility and possibility for robotics. And Boston Dynamics is riding that wave pretty damn well. Like they found it, they've discovered that hunger and, and curiosity in the people and they're doing magic with it. I don't care if the, I mean, I guess it's their company they have to make money, right? But uh, they're already doing incredible work and in inspiring the world about technology. I mean, do you have th do you have thoughts about Boston Dynamics and maybe others, your own work in robotics and inspiring the world in that way? I completely agree. I think Boston Dynamics is absolutely awesome. I think uh, I show my kids those videos, you know, and I, the best thing that happens is sometimes they've already seen them, you know. Uh, Right, I think, I, I just think it's a pinnacle of success in robotics that um, is just one of the best things that's happened. Uh, absolutely, completely agree. One of the heartbreaking things to me is how many robotics companies fail. Mm -hmm. How hard it is to make money with a robotics company. Like iRobot like went through hell just to arrive at a Roomba yeah. to figure out one product. And then there's so many um, home robotics companies like uh, Jibo and uh, Anki, Anki. The cutest toy, that's a great robot, I thought, uh, went down. I'm forgetting a bunch of them, but a bunch of robotics companies sure. fail. Yeah. Rod's company, uh, Rethink Robotics. Um, like, do you... Uh, do you have any, anything hopeful to say about the possibility of making money with robots? Oh, I think um, you can't just look at the failures. You can, all, I mean, Boston Dynamics is a success. There's yeah. lots of companies that are still doing amazingly good um, work in robotics. I mean, this is the uh, this is the capitalist ecology or something, right? I think you have many companies, you have many startups, and they push each other forward, and many of them fail, and some of them get through, and that's sort of the natural um way of things way of those things i don't know that is robotics really that much worse i i feel the pain that you feel too every time i read one of these i um, sometimes it's friends and and uh yeah i definitely wish it went better or went differently but i think it's healthy and good to have um bursts of ideas bursts of activities uh, ideas if they are really aggressive they should fail sometimes um Certainly, that's the research mantra, right? If you're succeeding at every problem you attempt, then you're not choosing aggressively enough. Is it exciting to you, uh, the new spot? Oh, it's, oh, you gonna, it's so good. When are you getting him as a pet? Uh, it? Yeah, I mean, I have to dig up 75K <laughs> right now. But, uh, I mean, it's I so do, cool that there's a price tag. You can go and and, and actually buy it. And I have a Skydio R1. Uh, love it. So, um, no, I, I would... I would I would absolutely be a customer. Uh, I wonder what your kids would think about it. I, I actually, um, Zach from Boston Dynamics would let my kid drive in one of their demos one time. And uh, that was just so good. Uh, so good. And, so and again, I'll it's forever kind of, be grateful for that. <laughs> and there's something magical about the anthropomorphization of that arm. It adds another level of human connection. I'm not sure we understand from a control aspect, uh, the value of anthropomorphization. Um, I, I think that's an understudied and under understood engineering problem. There's been a psycho like psychologists have been studying it. I think it's part like manipulating our mind to believe things um, is, a, is a valuable engineering. Like this is another degree of freedom that could be controlled. I like minds. that, yeah, I think that's right. I think. You know, there's something that humans seem to do, or maybe in my dangerous introspection, is uh, I think we are able to make very simple models that assume a, a lot about the world very quickly. 
and then uh, it takes us a lot more time. Like you're wrestling, you know, you probably thought you knew what you were doing with wrestling and you were fairly functional as a complete wrestler. And then uh, you slowly got more expertise. So maybe uh, it's natural that our first, first level of defense against seeing a new robot is to think of it in our existing models of how humans and animals behave. And it's just, and as you spend more time with it, then you'll develop more sophisticated models that will appreciate the differences.